Okay. My name is Ben Free. I am a deputy clerk with Utah County authorized to do marriages. I've been doing them a little over three and a half years, um, averaging about 10 marriages a day, Monday through Friday. So I've married a lot of people. But anyway, the point is here is that the two of you found each other out of 10.3 billion people on this planet and you fell in love with each other. So you want to get married now, okay? And that's awesome, okay? Congratulations on that choice and decision. Uh, I will go into the ceremony first and then I will counsel with you after that, depending upon how much time we have and what we have to do. All right, so um, to start off with, she, which one's she? Here's, who's she? You're she. Okay. Shi Shen Tan and Yong Hu. Okay. Okay. So Shi Shen, Shi Shen Tang, do you take Yong Hu to be your legally and lawfully wedded? No. Um, Wrong names. Sorry. It's Caitlin uh, and Ross. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I took one, two pages, one page too many off. Okay, no, so no, no, let's try, no. I'm going, these names aren't matching up here. So John Ross <laughs> McLaughlin and Caitlin Cecilia Pe uh, Prep Prepuk. Okay. Dad. Okay, that's better. That sounds better. Thank you, dad, for correcting yeah. me. <laughs> okay, so John Ross McLaughlin, do you take Caitlin Cecilia Prepuk to be your be legally and lawfully wedded wife? to cleave unto her as she cleaves unto you, to help her be your best as she helps you to be your best, to obey her as she obeys you. That's two-way street. Through sickness, health, rich, poor, fat, thin, COVID-22, call it like it is, wars, riots, natural disasters, ups, downs, ins, outs, holidays, celebrations, jubilations, family, friends, nature, until death, you depart. I do. Perfect. Okay, do you have a ring to put on her finger today? Well, not with us, no. Okay, that's fine. Do you have any vows or promises to tell her today? Not for today. Well, just tell her you love her. I mean, you're getting married to her today, so you better tell her you love her. <laughs> okay, so you said you love her. All right, perfect. App one is you, John. Okay, and vows. All right. So now, okay, and Patricia and and Jozo. Jozo. Joseph, that's it. Well done. Joseph Joan France Francois. Francois, that's it. Joseph Jean Francois. Joseph Jean Francois. Okay, so Patrick and Joseph French. Joseph, John, Francois, you both heard yes in the affirmative? That's correct, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Perfect. Uh, witness. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right. Now we're going to go to you, Caitlin. Caitlin, Cecilia, Prepark. Do you take John Ross McLaughlin? to be your legally and lawfully wedded husband, to cleave unto him as he cleaves unto you, to help him be his best as he helps you to be your best, to obey him as he obeys you through sickness, health, rich, poor, fat, thin, COVID-22, call it like it is, wars, riots, natural disasters, downs, ups, holidays, celebrations, jubilations, triumphs, family, friends, nature, until death you depart. Yes, I do. Perfect. So... Okay, you said you said yes. Okay, do you have any vows or promises to say to John today? I love you so much. I will promise that I will continue to love you, even when I'm nagging to do housework <laughs> and you don't do it all. <laughs> inside joke, inside joke, right? Okay. <laughs> all right. So, okay. Okay, so, okay, perfect. And my witnesses, you heard her say yes in the affirmative, and you validate the fact that she said her vows willingly. We did? Yes, yes, we did. Perfect. Okay. I should have checked this, and I didn't. You guys came up on me a little fast. 
Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So I need to send you a recording. I'm just writing a little note here. Send recording. Okay. Of the ceremony. All right. Now, because I heard you say yes, and because Patricia, and yeah, I'm sorry, I can't read the writing they've got down here. Joseph Jean Francois. Jo Jojo Jane Francois. That's it. Jojo Jane Francois. Francois. I know it's French. I can put my French accent on it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe say it a little bit. Jojo Jane Francois. Okay. So because you said yes to each other willingly, or you heard them validate the fact that they said yes to each other willingly. Uh, and because I heard you say yes to each other willingly, I now get to say this. And she doesn't have a ring to put on your finger either. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. All right. So because I heard you say yes to each other and you joined us remotely here in our Health and Justice Building, I now pronounce you John Ross McLaughlin and Caitlin Cecilia Prepak, legally and lawfully married as husband and wife. You may now hug and kiss each other as such. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Okay, now now we're ready for some challenges. <laughs> All right, challenge number one. I challenge you to choose each other each day and choose to be happy. Happiness is a choice. Anger is usually pushed on us, okay, but happiness is a choice. So choose each other each day and choose to be happy. Secondly, I challenge you to go on at least one date a week. You can go on as many dates as you want. You can go do whatever you want, but at least go on one date a week and um, go someplace where you can have some fun. Secondly, I challenge you also, you both work, okay? Uh, nobody's told me that, but out of all the people that I've married over the three and a half years, I've only had 15 tell me that they could live off of one income. So that means you both work. And usually it's at work or on the way to work or on the way home from work where we have problems. Uh, you two are fires and just like you're just like um, Patricia and Jojo Jean Francois are, are fires as well. When two fires come together, they're brighter and happier. And that's where you're at. Okay, but the fire needs to be contained. So this is your marriage fire pit. Everything that's happened to you up to this point is underground. Your hearts are the walls to the fire pit. If you're emotionally challenged, your fire walls down. The fire can then jump out and start burning things like your vows or promises to each other. And you don't want that to happen. So don't treat each other as an object. You're not putting each other up for display because you love, revere, and respect each other for who you are today. Okay, so you're not putting each other up as an object. Okay, but it's your firewalls. When, when you're emotionally challenged because of some, something made you angry at work or whatever is down, then the fire can jump out and start burning vows and promises. And you think, well, she doesn't love me. He doesn't love me, whatever it is. Okay. You don't want that to happen. So you need to bring your own firewall up, but you can, John, offer suggestions to Caitlin and Caitlin, you can offer suggestions to John as to how to do that. And those are most helpful. Okay, so you go to work, you have an experience at work where you get into an anger mode. How do you know that you're in angry mode? Because typically your voice level goes from what, just like a normal voice up to a little bit gruffer voice. And that's how you know that you're angry and you need to let go of the anger. So find some way to let go of the anger. Well, here's some suggestions for you. Okay, you can swipe each other. What does that mean? Well, that means you're going to take your hand, John, and go to the top of Caitlin's head and go down just without really touching. You don't have to touch all the way down, but just go down and out the tailbone fast three times. Okay. You can also put a magnet in it. That's what my wife and I do. And then she's going to do the same thing for you. We do it every morning and every night. Um, I'm not saying this to boast, but we've been married for 47 years. Okay, so I think that that has that has something to do with it. But there's other things you can do. You can meditate. I think meditation is a little slow for getting rid of anger. Uh, exercise is a good way to do it. I'm not talking about going to a gym and pumping weights or bicycling with your feet. No, I am talking about going to a green space. Okay, 
uh, someplace like a, a, a little park where you can walk around and you exercise by walking around in the park, looking at nature, looking at the sky, feeling the rest and peace that nature has. Yes, when a storm comes in, it's pretty violent. It drops its moisture or whatever it's going to do. Then it leaves and then it, the nature goes back to a state of peace. Anger, want, anger is an emotion. And I call him a he because he's very forceful and very powerful. And he wants to go to bed with you when you're angry. All right. So you need to keep anger at bay. Okay. So, so you want to meditate. You can exercise. You can banter back and forth. What's a banter? Well, let's just say, let's just say, uh, Caitlin, that it was you that the boss came in and says, okay, where's the project you've been working on for the last four weeks? And you're going, what project? He's like, what do you mean? I sent you an email. I didn't see an email. So he comes over to your computer. He starts taking over and says, okay, go to your emails. Okay, let's go to received emails. And he looks down. He doesn't see it there. He says, you deleted it. What did you do with it? So he sees he's making it worse and worse and worse and worse. Because he's a guy, he thinks, if he thought about it for four weeks, he thinks it's done. And it's not. And ultimately, he goes back to his desk his computer and he looks to see if he sent you the email and he did not so he resends the email he looks up his files resends the email to you and says i we need to have this done tomorrow i need to have you stay late tonight even if you have to stay till 12 or 12 30 tonight i need to have you do that okay make arrangements so you can do that and then i need you back early in the morning at seven o'clock okay and so you're just like oh that's not what I wanted to do <laughs> for sure. Okay. But it, it makes you angry because, and he's, and he's not going to admit that he made a mistake as guys. If we think about something too long, we feel like we've already done it and we haven't. Okay. So that's the problem. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So anyway, he, so he sends that to you, you work on it. You come back in the morning, you're letting, you have to let, you have to let John know what time you're going to be coming home. So he doesn't worry about you because he's going to check in with you to make sure you arrive safely. And he may decide to escort you from wherever you're getting off at. Um, if you have your own car, you'll be getting off out of your driveway, but he may escort you in the house or whatever so that he knows that you're safe because that's important. Okay. So he's worried about you. And if you have a, a little bump in your day, where something happens sometimes you can say you can send a heart and then the word hug okay heart hug which means you need a hug and so you're going to send her back a heart hug heart and that means you got the message and you're sending her back a hug okay then you know you're thinking about each other and sometimes that's just enough to plateau it off so that you're not going on a spike of anger okay but anger wants to come home to bed with you anger is just an emotion i call him a he because he's very forceful and very powerful and he and that's what he thrives on so you need to get rid of him so that's why you were bantering back and forth so you're for every negative thing that she says you're saying two positives okay and it works the other way too you know if he's saying a negative thing you're saying two positives okay and that helps each of you to know what you really think of each other and how you respect each other and revere each other and help each other okay you can also tap by saying, even though they said this about me, I know that this is not true and this is what I believe. And you tap at your points where it affects your body and your bachelor buttons down here. Okay, that's tapping. And tapping works too for some people. Myself, my wife and I, we do the swiping thing. Okay, but you can also do yoga exercises. Sometimes you get a trapped emotion in a joint. Okay, and it hurts a lot. So you need to, you can use yoga exercises to break that free and let it go. So anger is not staying with you. Okay. So exercise. Okay. You're going on a date at least once a week. I also challenge you, John, to take Caitlin out someplace where you would like to go on a date. Okay. Even if that is a game and you're sitting in the bleacher seats watching the game from up above and you're freezing your little tushies off, okay, <laughs> because it's cold outside. And you can explain to her why you like that and it will help her to understand your heart better. Okay. Same with you, Caitlin. You take John someplace where you would like to go, even if that's a dress shop. Okay, because you go to the dress shop, you can go in, you pick out a dress, you try it on for him, you come out, and he can say, 
whatever he wants to say. So let's just say he says, ah, oh, that doesn't flatter you. Okay, so next, try again. So you go pick a different style. Okay, you come out and he goes, oh, I like that a lot better. That's a lot better than the last one. Okay, and then you try <laughs> and you said, okay, I'm going to go for gusto. You're thinking to yourself, I'm going to go for gusto here. So I'm going to try another dress. So you're trying another dress. You come out and he goes, whoa, you look amazing. Other than I don't like the color of the dress, but you look amazing. Let's see if we can find it in a different color. Okay. Now you have something that you're going to look wonderful and amazing in every time you wear that dress. Okay. And so that's what you want to hear. You don't want to hear like, eh, that's so, so. Yeah. So you want to hear positive stuff. You want to know that you're beautiful and that he loves you for not just your looks, but also for your brain and your intellect and for your organization skills and for your motherly advice, okay? Because you can counsel with him. <clears throat> you offer suggestions to him, he offers suggestions to you. All right, so that's my suggestion. Take it someplace where you like to go and do that. And if it's a Mitre D restaurant, go there. Enjoy the food. And you have to have a skip. You have to pay for it like or schedule it like three or four months in advance to get to some of these Mitre D restaurants because they're booked up till then. Okay, but you also know there's a live play going on. You want to go to the play too. So you make it a, a play dinner uh, date and you get out and you have a full moon shining brightly down on you. Couldn't it be a better night? Okay, and you might be a little chilly, but you're walking arm in arm and you're headed home. Okay, so that could be a wonderful date. But you probably didn't think about the moon part, but you know, that could happen or there could be no moon. Okay, where's our moon? It's not here because <laughs> it's a new moon. All right. Anyway, so anyway, choose each other. Choose to be happy and help each other. You're not an object. Okay. You're not a project. Okay. You, uh, John, you can't fix Caitlin. Caitlin can't fix John, but you can offer suggestions. And lastly, you're not a task. So don't put tasks together. I challenge you not to go on a task date. That's where you have like six places to go, Caitlin. And John, you have five places to go. And you say, hey, let's just go together and we'll just go around. And I've only I've done that once or twice. And it's always just frustrating. You're hungry. You're tired. Uh, you don't get to go every place. Some of the stores close before you can get there. You don't get to make your choices exactly the way you want to do that. Okay. And so that's important. Um, so don't make it a task date. Try to work your tasks in your normal day. You have a lunch hour. Sometimes it's close. This places are close enough. You can go at least to one or two of those <clears throat> every day. Plus have your lunch and come back to work. And you can get your tasks taken care of that way. But don't you don't want to frustrate each other. You don't want to do anything like that. So help each other to be your best. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. And lastly, you're not a... a so you're not a task date, but also don't put a task above each other, okay? However, some tasks you have to immediately work on. For example, if you came home, you unlocked your door, you opened it up and water stored, started pouring out into your where your feet are at, you're going, whoops, we got a problem. Uh, unbeknownst to you, they turned the water off to the building and then they worked on a repair and then they turned the water back on. When they did that, it blew the water line off of the toilet and it's flooding the floor and going everywhere, okay? So you have to turn it off. That's an immediate turn it off now, okay? Or uh, you walk in, uh, you undo, undo the door and you open it up and smoke starts coming out of your apartment or your house or whatever it is, okay? <clears throat> and so you have to, and that's something that needs to be fixed now as well. And you have to be careful because, Smoke coming out, and once if it gets a blast of oxygen, sometimes it goes kaboom. Okay, and so you don't want it to go kaboom. All right, so you crawl down on the floor, and you're walking over, you're looking up, and you're saying, "Oh, the microwave is sparking and arcing. That's the problem." So you have to unplug it. Once you unplug it, the sparks stop. Then you have to get the the smoke out. Okay, but what I'm saying is those are tasks that have to be done immediately. I know that. I, we had that water experience because the city came and turned the water off, turned it back on, and it blew a water line. And nobody was in the house. And we weren't living there either. So we were just checking on it. And come in, and the kitchen floor is all buckled with water everywhere. And there was two inches of water down in the basement and all that. So we had to turn it off, and we had to fix it. Okay? So I'm just saying, sometimes you have to do it. 
but usually you can follow your plan. So choose each other and choose to be happy. Next, you're creating a marriage card today. Okay, so believe it or not, your hearts are your battery to your marriage car. Okay, and because you love each other, you have fully charged batteries. So that's not the problem. And your experiences together, you have gas in your gas tank. The thing that you were missing was the gears. So now we're putting the gears together for your car and I've already married you. So you have your gears are in place now. Now you can start your engine and drive into the sunrise or the sunset or North Pole, South Pole, whatever you wanna do. But you're going together and you'll be together until death you depart. Okay, that's the way it's designed. Okay, so choose each other, choose to be happy. You're gonna have some times that you're just going, why, this is not working so well. Let's, you know, but sit down and talk to each other about it. Find out each other's feelings, listen to each other, compliment each other, choose each other, and you can have an amazing life. So congratulations. Okay. Uh, that's, that's that part. Okay, now I need to get over here. I'm gonna, okay, I'll move you over here. I want to get to, okay, over here. Yes, this is where I wanna go. Okay, and your license number, 273, 275, okay. All right, I would like you to glance at your application and so we can correct any errors that we see at this point in time. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so having said that, I'm going here to us. Come on, bring me up here. Okay, now I want to go down here. Are you gonna let me open up or not? You're not going to let me open up. Come on, I wanna look at this. I wanna share screen. Come on. Uh, keep going. Keep going. This meeting is being recorded. Yes, it is. And yes, we are. I'm sorry. I can't get to your application to show you your application. I wanted to share my screen with you. And usually it's at the bottom of this with Zoom. And it's not cooperating with me. All right. So I'm sorry, we'll just have to end this. I can not I can read it to you, but that's not the same as you physically looking at it. Okay. So John Ross McLaughlin, McLaughlin, John Ross McLaughlin, Liz, your signature, and you don't have a social security number because you're not from the United States. Is that correct? Okay, and your birthday is July, 21, 2003. Yes. Okay. And the state of birth was Lyon, France. That's the French way. Okay. And you're 19. Okay. You're old enough to get married. All right. This is your first marriage. Uh, your phone number. Not that that'll do us any good because we can't call country across countries. Okay. Uh, 230, 591. 53890. Yes. Okay. And your email is John RM eight forty eighty four sixty at staroyo.com. Uh, yes, please, yes. S T A R O Y O. Okay. All right. And your address 36 Rue de la Carriel, Mont Climb. Call me. Okay, and Tamarin, uh, Black River Province, and zip 2050. And county, country is Mar Maritas. Okay, and then this is your father's John Michael McLaughlin. Okay, and your state of birth is Ruther Glen in Scotland. Okay, uh, mother is Leslie Ann Adamson, and her state of birth is. Sir Caldi, Scotland. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna go over with you real fast here. 
I'll say Caitlin Cecilia Prepkop. Your surname is Prepcott, Caitlin Cecilia Prepcott. Okay, no social. 724 2001. Yes. Birthday. Uh, state, Goteng. Yes. South Africa. Yes. Okay, 21. You're female, white. First marriage. Yes. Uh, phone number 230 581. 97670. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Caitlin N sorry, Caitlin CP8793 at star yo yo star star royo dot com. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> okay. All right. Perfect. And your address is the same 36 Rue de la Cariel, Mont, Mont Calme, in Tarman, Black River is your state of Providence. So you don't, you're not together yet. Okay, you have different addresses. In Martis, and the zip code there is 2050. Father's name? Yojo Jean Francois, Trepcock. Okay, and Durban Quajulo Natal is the state of birth in South Africa. And your father's name, or yes, is Patricia Stevenson? No, I'm sorry, this is your mother. Patricia Stevenson, that's your mother's name, sorry. And Peter Maritzburg, Bazulnalta, South Africa. Yes. Okay, sounds good. All right, perfect. Thank you for going over that. Okay, so the rest of the story is we will finalize your license uh, probably tomorrow or Friday at the latest. You will receive certified email copies first. When you get those copies, uh, you're looking at, you're going to check them over again to make sure everything is correct. Sometimes we have a, we have had a computer bug. Sometimes it just shows up. It hasn't showed up for a long, long time, but it sometimes switches numbers around. So your birthday you know, might switch your date or your year number around and make you a lot older than you really are or something. So we want you to check it. Any mistakes, we want you to email us back at marriage at utahcounty.gov. Reference your license number, 273-832. And then we will look it up and we will fix it, okay? Because that's not, that's not your fault, okay? It's not gonna cost you anything more. And then we will send you out, when we know everything is correct, we will send you out a certified paper copy it is embossed. I suggest you put it someplace where it's not seen by the sun and then, but you know where it is because you know where to look. If you had to do a grab and go, if you didn't have any pets or if you don't have any children, uh, take, this, take the license with you. You can always replace a license, but you might not be able to replace the pet or you might not be able to, and we know you can't replace the children. So uh, let the license burn. You can just get another one. That's okay. So just make sure you get your priorities right. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Make it a wonderful life. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you, everybody. And thank, thank you for you. your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye now. Yes, you make it Bye. a good day as well. Oh, there's Bye. my Bye.